three accusations of copyright infringement will be enough to take it away. We have convicted felons who are allowed to have access to universities and to, uh, to conduct a, a, a long-distance education and all the rest of it, to talk to their families and all the rest of it. We're going to lose that for, for accused copyright infringers if the three strikes proposal goes through. And to understand just how disproportional that is, imagine if it were a three strikes proposal for bogus copyright accusations. So like Viacom accuses three people of infringing copyright when they didn't, as they just did when they sent 100,000 copyright infringement notices to, uh, to YouTube. Right? Or Universal, who uh, um, sent a, a copyright infringement notice on behalf of Prince to uh, uh, the mother of a, uh, an adorable toddler who danced in the kitchen while Let's Get Crazy was playing in the background. She uploaded 29 seconds of it, and the judge said, you knew that this wasn't copyright infringement when you sent the notice. You just hoped that they would be too poor to fight any copyright and it would just dis in, in court and it would just disappear. You sent three of those, and we go over to the headquarters of EMI or Warner or Viacom with a giant set of bolt cutters, and we make them the record label that can only use faxes from now on because we cut their internet platform, right? Imagine that would be, right? I mean, it's inconceivable the business could even continue to function if we shut off its internet connection. And that's what we're pro proposing to take away. Now, I go way back with computers. I have a really unhealthy relationship with them. It's the only drug I take anymore is computers. Uh, in, in 1979, my dad brought an Apple II Plus home. It had a modem. And all of a sudden, I had access to communities and tools and ideas that even the most powerful, rich, and, and sophisticated grown-ups of a decade before could have dreamt of having. And every year, computers gave me more power, gave me more access to more tools, more communities, more ideas. I see a lot of people in the audience tonight that I know through computers. I see people in the audience tonight whose lives have been changed by computers. I know that this is your story, too. And every year, I felt like computers were bringing us closer to a kind of utopia where we would all have more agency than we dreamt of before. And then I started thinking about what computers were doing to kids today. And I realized that if you're a kid today, you have a lot more in common with the kids of my dad's generation who wore little buttons that said, I am a student, do not bend, spindle, fold, or mutilate me, and took the punch cards that represented their identities at the universities and burned them, and smashed computers because they saw them as tools for regimentation and control. People who predated the personal computer revolution and people who postdate the personal computer revolution were both justifiably suspicious of computers because today, computers are being used to snitch on us, to spy on us, to control us, to, um, to do things, particularly to young people, that are a kind of beta test for what's going to be done to the rest of us. So, you know, universal wiretapping is now a fact of life thanks to the FISA bill and thanks to the senators on both sides who voted for it. Right? The Fourth Amendment has been suspended, but the Fourth Amendment has been suspended for young people for as, uh, for as long as there's been internet access in schools. Right? Schools have, for a decade now, paid scumbag companies like Smart Filter, uh, which um, uh, basically they hired boiler rooms full of uh, blue noses to look at every page on the internet and say this one's good and this one's bad and kids can look at this one and kids can't look at this one. And you know they make tons of mistakes. They're just, it's just completely ridiculous that, that this, this endeavor, it's, it's, it's broken and will never succeed. They hire these companies that also provide the network filters for Siri and the United Emirates to filter our classrooms. Right? So kids know what it's like to live without the Fourth Amendment because they've been subject to bulk surveillance long before the NSA got it into their head to surveil the entire internet. 